All right, we're gonna watch the we're gonna watch the the shark tier list, right? I will preface this by saying I am not a shark expert. I have opinions on sharks, but I, uh, you know, they're opinions. At the end of the day. And today I want to highlight one of the most important, the implementation of the move Bite. There's actually a fair bit of debate on which guilds can take credit for pioneering this move, but there's no question that one of the first to really perfect it, to the point of being meta-defining, were none other than the Sharks. And since then, they've been holding onto that top spot tighter than Ice Climber players hold onto a wobbling victim. They've been extremely- <laughs> in every I never thought I'd hear a melee reference in a fucking shark tier list video. He really just mentioned wobbling. In a shark series video. expansion since the Silurian, something very few guilds can claim. So Wait, today, does that mean Tierzu plays melee? I didn't know that. The main benefits of playing a shark build include high mobility, high damage, and most importantly, the ability to sense any player near you due to special abilities like blood sense and electroreception. Main drawbacks include <laughs> lacking swim bladder, an ability which allows the user to control their buoyancy at will, and also lacking gill flaps. Gill flaps passively regenerate stamina and is an ability unique to bony fish, so sharks can only regenerate stamina if they're moving. Now let's talk about individual shark builds. I'm not gonna lie, I totally spaced out. I have no idea what he just said. I think that he's speaking less clearly and less quickly, and I've already just fucking spaced out. I feel bad. In bottom tier, we have nothing. There are genuinely no shark builds I could justify as being bottom tier. Most sharks don't deviate too far from the base shark concept, well which said. is good because it's a great guide for success. With that said, not all sharks are created equal, and indeed here we have two builds which don't really capitalize Aww, on the Aww, why'd you have to hit him? Class. First Sawfish is, is so cute. Low mobility, sedentary playstyle, and a really weak bite. Instead of abusing the powerful kit available for shark classes, nurse sharks rummage around the ocean floor looking for easy XP. However, they do have the strongest suction force of any fish, and since they don't have many terrible matchups, they're definitely no F tier. <laughs> Get shit on lionfish. We have the saw shark. Saw shark players, what are you doing? <laughs> Teeth are some of the. <laughs> That's so mean. I think the saw shark isn't that bad of an adaptation. Saw shark. Saw. This isn't a bad adaptation. What's wrong with this? In comparison to a fucking seahorse, they do nothing, but they look so cool. Yeah, at least it's not a seahorse. <laughs> Shark players, what are you doing? <laughs> Teeth are some of the best weapons in the game, and the only drawback to using them is that breaking them can ruin your playthrough. But sharks have replaceable teeth, so that weakness is completely nullified. So why did you opt for this goofy, <laughs> cumbersome, impractical weapon setup? Swinging that thing around uses way too much stamina for what it nets you, and isn't very useful for defending yourself. Whatever, you do you, I guess. In C tier, we've got all the sharks that decided they'd rather AFK their entire game instead of making use of the best tools available to sharks. This includes the basking shark, whale shark, and any other shark who thought filter feeding was a better idea than being a swimming doom machine. <laughs> yes, it may be easy if you make it to the- This, okay, once again my problem with the tier zoo tier list is he's assuming- <laughs> He's assuming that everything in a specific class needs to fit the same- same general idea. Not all sharks need to be predators like that. They just don't. It's not necessary. In fact, the basking sharks and whale sharks are pretty successful because they have their own unique niche. That's the whole point. Thinking that everything needs to exactly conform to what the, you know, the genus in general does doesn't make any sense. Late game. But without good weapons and low mobility, the majority of your playthrough is a huge risk, with mobile fish players like the marlin and sailfish having no problem taking you out. <laughs> Now we're in B tier, and we're almost to the shark builds who know how sharks are meant to be played. Almost. But first, we've got two more unorthodox builds. Some of my personal favorites, actually. The first is a shark who decided that, despite being one of the smallest of its kind, it would attack the largest builds in the game. The cookie cutter shark. <laughs> cookie cutter sharks are unorthodox in that instead of going for the predator playstyle, they function as a parasite. They simply latch onto a whale or other massive player, and by twisting themselves back and forth, they steal a cookie-shaped bite right off. This doesn't Got do much em. damage to players, 
But interestingly, this build was a secret among the Shark Guild up until a few cookie cutter players accidentally attacked human submarines and actually caused their sonar to malfunction. This was during the Cold War, so the Russians and Americans assumed that the other was somehow sabotaging their submarines, until eventually a Soviet sub surfaced with a Shark player still latched on. The Thresher Shark. It is really funny that both the Soviet Union and the United States thought that each other were messing with each other's submarines and it was just a little shark. Attacking a school of fish is difficult, and due to their advanced evasion and diversion tactics, you have to be fast, lucky, or clever in order to even catch a single fish. I do love the the bipolarity here. Of the last video we watched, he talked about how marlins are so amazing at what they do in catching fish, and now he's showing a video of a marlin incapable of catching a group of fish. That is, unless you can hit them with a flashbang, which is essentially what Thresher Sharks do. Thresher Sharks have tails as long as the rest of their body, and they use them as a whip, creating shockwaves which stun small groups of fish, negating their normally excellent evasion abilities. They do all of this without deviating too far from the great base stats of the shark build, so they retain decent Thresher ability Sharks might be my favorite too, so I kind of like whale sharks. In A tier, we finally get to those famous core shark builds everyone knows, loves, and fears. We'll start with the Tiger Sharks. Tiger Sharks have higher stealth than most of the well-known shark builds, and also have uniquely shaped teeth that make them more effective at cutting through armor and bone. Similar to actual tigers, the main strategy of a tiger shark is to get close to its target with stealth, and then use a quick burst of speed to snatch it before it can react. On the opposite end of the spectrum from this strategy, we have the Mako Shark, which has the highest mobility of all the sharks, and uses this to chase down its targets. This playstyle requires a lot of stamina, so this build <laughs> breaks the mold and opts for warm blood instead of being cold-blooded like most other fish. This gives the Mako Shark the benefits of fast stamina regeneration, allowing it to keep up a pursuit longer than most other hunters. Since this speed comes at a cost to size, it doesn't quite have the monstrous weight advantage over its targets, and so Mako players need to be careful and not get too greedy. The ocean's other premier speed demons, the Swordfish and Marlin, can be tough matchups for them. At the top of A tier, we have the Bull Shark. The first is that they have the highest bite force of any shark, meaning that even though they have pretty average teeth in terms of slicing and cutting utility, they can still deliver an extremely potent bite. The oh. second ability is that okay. Bull Sharks can enter freshwater servers without receiving the energy sapping and damaging debuff that obligate saltwater builds do. This allows them to travel into rivers and streams where they have no real competition. Megalodon's this obviously an S tier. Best build for griefing low-level players. And judging by the bull shark's reputation for being the most aggressive shark, it's clear that this is exactly the type of player that this build attracts. What makes them so excellent is how well they use their tracking abilities, blood sense, and electroreception. The great white shark is no doubt the most feared ocean build in the current meta, and the closest thing to the god tier megalodon still in existence. They pretty much just take everything that makes sharks so strong and push all of those things to their limit. They don't have as high bite damage as the tiger or bull shark, but the force of a Great White's charge attack slamming into their target more than makes up for it, and usually takes the stock no problem. This is why the Great White's ability to see above water is so crucial, because they can <laughs> see which islands and reefs their targets are hiding on and camp them out. Their blood sensibility is through the roof, and their electroreception ability is quite polished as well, but nowhere near to the extent of the last build on my list, the Hammerhead. Now, it's an interesting if you aren't a choice. Player, I'm willing to bet that when you look at this build, you think the player fell asleep during character creation and accidentally set eye width to the max. But if you think this option is purely aesthetic and not. No, hammerheads are really good. Their vision's really well adapted, as stupid as it looks. They have an amazing, you know, field of vision. I don't think that that makes them S tier, though. Not intentional. You couldn't be more wrong. Hammerheads have the best, most well optimized sensory abilities in the game. They have full panoramic vision and have binocular eyesight ahead and behind them, which gives them a massive accuracy bonus on the attack and a huge evasion bonus if they're being chased. With the chemo and electroreceptors on the front of their face, they essentially have 3D smell and 3D electroreception, putting their spatial awareness almost as high as dolphins and bats. Their snout shape also lets them turn on a dime, which makes it so their attacks almost never miss. Furthermore, while they don't hunt together, they do travel in schools, providing safety in numbers and causing an intimidation debuff on pretty much the entire surrounding area. So that's the tier list for the Sharks. As you can see, they're an amazing class with a lot of useful abilities and strengths to play around with. They have only a few bad mashups like Dolphins, Orcas, and a few other top tier fish like Swordfish and Marlin. Thanks for watching.
You may have noticed that this channel went from less than 10,000 to well above 100,000 within a single week. Which Damn, he literally did exactly what mine did, huh? Except, you know, on a smaller scale, but basically did exactly what my video, my channel did.